ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode number 18 of the Stevenage Football Club podcast, hosted by myself and Borough fan Matt Farley, along with guests of the podcast, discussing everything Borough, everything League 2, every week of the season. Now, it is a little bit of a funny one tonight, I've got to be honest to the listeners. Um, originally, I was supposed to be joined by two guests tonight on the podcast, but... There has been a traffic accident and unfortunately those two uh, young gentlemen are currently sitting on the uh, A1, I do believe. So it is just me tonight uh, doing the podcast, which is a little bit of a funny one because just me being kind of solo with my thoughts and and going through the podcast. Um, It is going to be the same format. Uh, We're going to discuss all the recent results and upcoming fixtures, a little bit on the FA Cup, League 2 Roundup and the Q&A section, but I'll be answering all the questions. Uh, once again, very sorry to the listeners that this has happened. To be honest, I think, you know, with 18 episodes gone, um, I think we've done quite well considering that no one's been off ill or, you know, missed the podcast. So, yeah, unfortunately, it's just me tonight. Um, now, we'll get straight into it. Um, we had our 14th League Two fixture of the season away at Port Vale on Saturday. We'll come to that fixture first. Um, we drew 1-1. Away from home, um, I think we all looked upon this result as a as a good result. Another point away from home, another draw, six draws. Um, the game was a very difficult one. We went one nil down, and I think you know, we didn't start the greatest on Saturday. Um, a couple of changes in the side, um, and yeah, it was it was a bit of a tough start, um, but. Getting a penalty, which I think we all thought was a penalty, to be honest. Scott Cuthbert kind of getting tugged in the box. And Curtis Guthrie dispatching the penalty. Um, and it's a really good point. Um, putting us on to nine points in bottom place, which was unfortunate. Morecambe getting a result. So it actually meant that we got a result and, and dropped down to, to bottom place. Um, yeah, my thoughts on the performance with this. I, again, I thought we started... Um, a little bit slowly, which has been a bit weird for us because recently we've seemed to start it, start match start matches sorry um, really quickly and uh, yeah it was a bit weird to see us start slowly but I think what really impressed me in the game was in the last twenty minutes of matches and I think it's happened in the opening thirteen games and even the cup games. The last 20 minutes, we've we've played poorly in a lot of the games. And something that really impressed me about Saturday was the last 20 minutes, we were the better team. Um, I don't know how the ball didn't go in the goal for a winner. Uh, the chance that got cleared off the line and hit Curtis on the head. Um, Craig Mikhail smith made an impact when he came on and was kind of interconnecting the play. Um, probably did better than Cowley, in my opinion. And I thought we ended the game really well. Um, but a really important point and... I think that was important for Mark to get the point as well. You know, after winning two back-to-back and winning in in the league, it was really important not to lose on Saturday. Um, And draws are always important results away from home, especially for clubs of our size. To to get a draw away from home is always a positive result. And um, it was really good to get a win and a draw and be unbeaten in two league matches. And OK, nine points, bottom of the division, but it was a positive performance and... um, it was great to see Van Kooten back on the pitch, play brilliantly when he came on. Um, yeah, and I thought it was a, a very good performance and a very good point. On another day, probably would have won the game. Um, but no, very tough of it overall. Um, I will quickly read out the three-word analysis sent in by supporters. There wasn't actually many three-word analyses actually on the uh, game Saturday. It seems to be whenever Borough win or get a draw, we don't really get many. And then when they lose, we get a we, we get an influx of about 25. Um, but the three-word analysis for Saturday was Jed said improve second half. Yeah, I seem to agree with that, Jed. Nate said must do better. Rhys Donnelly, we're getting there. Patrick Jackson finished strongly. Positive. I like that one. The Stevenage Football Club fang zone. Brown was quality. I'm kind of getting the fact that Brown, I do believe, was their goalkeeper, um, which is quite a good one because, yeah, he was he was uh, really good for them. I think something that we've been really unlucky about as well is we, we've come up so we've come up against sorry some really good goalkeepers this season that have put in match performance in um, at saves. And, you know, if we go back to Bradford, I don't know how we didn't score in that goal. You know, Danny Newton's header and, and a couple of other chances. Um, 
The Mansfield goalkeeper as well pulled off some brilliant saves. Saturday, um, the goalkeeper was amazing. Curtis Guthrie's free kick. What a free kick that was. And I don't know how he saved that one. Um, so that's a really good one, actually. Uh, Nick said, only ways up. And the last one was sent in by Johnny Hibbard. And Johnny said, impressive second half. So thank you to all the listeners for sending in their three-word analysis. There's actually quite, it's quite good ones there, considering. Um... But yeah, it was overall, in my opinion, I think it was a, a really positive point. And I think um, there were a lot of positives in our last 25 minutes performance, getting the ball down and we looked a really strong unit away from home. Another thing I must say as well, Port Vale are unbeaten at home this season. So to think that we didn't lose there, we got a point and nearly won the game, I think really kind of is a credit to the players. And uh, yeah, I thought it was a, a very good footballing display. And again... The last 20 minutes, last 25 minutes was was really positive in my opinion. Um, so yeah, Saturday, 24th place with nine points. Now, we went into Tuesday night after Saturday. Um, we had Swindon Town away, our 15th lead two fixture of the season. And I think going into this game, we were all positive. I think, you know, Swindon... I think we said it on last week's podcast, hadn't won in, I think it was four games. Um, and I think, from my point of view, as a, as a Borough fan, I went into that game really positive. We don't normally do well at Swindon, and I, I do believe it's a stat that we've never won there in League Two. I think we won, you know, we won back in the, uh, many years ago in the FA Cup when Paul Fairclough was manager. But we hadn't, well, I don't think we've won there in the league. So there's that stat kind of glooming over the, uh, you know, our team. I went into that positive and I thought the last three performances have been positive, including the leasing.com performance and win. Um, now, I don't normally get really hurt by many results at Borough. Whenever we lose, as people know, I'm a very positive person. Um, but this result really did hurt, actually, Tuesday. Um, we lost 1-0 away from home. Uh, the winning goal came... In the 90th minute, um, it, it really was heartbreaking, in my opinion. Um, it's the first time this season I've properly been really devastated at a result. Again, I'm normally a positive Stevenage fan, and whenever the team lose, I always go on to the next game. But that game really did hurt on Tuesday night. Um, it, it, in my opinion, I wasn't too impressed with the performance. Um you could clearly see that we weren't as good as Swindon and that really disappointed me because Swindon had been poor prior to that game and we were coming off the back of some really good results and you know I'll be completely honest I thought Swindon controlled the game throughout we had glimpses and and there were times when we got on the ball and there was a couple of good passages of play where we passed the ball well for me, it looked like it was a counter-attacking performance. We were set up to counter-attack using Sanupe, um with Guthrie as a bit of pace. But we didn't control that midfield. You know, Michael Doughty and Anthony Grant, who we know at Borough, who used to play for us back in League One, controlled that midfield. And, and we didn't win a lot of battles in there. Um, and I think that that game on Tuesday really did open my eyes up to some of the issues that we have in the team. And I hadn't really seen these issues, you know, a lot over the season. But that was really the first game where I kind of sat and watched and thought, God, there's there's a lot of work still need to be done here. For me, watching that game, I think it was evident that, that the back line is fine. I think, you know, those players back there are good enough, experienced enough. Paul Farman in goal was brilliant again, other than the booking, which, you know, as we know, he's now suspended for Saturday, I do believe. They, you know, there's nothing wrong with those players. I, I think the players up top, don't think there's anything wrong there. Um, our, our players up top are scoring goals. Curtis Guthrie's got five. Jason Cowley's got three. And Danny Newton's got two. You know, those players are actually, if you look on paper, actually scoring goals. But for me, the midfield, and I think I echo a lot of Borough fans' views on this, is a real concern. Um you can see that we are lacking a top quality midfield player in there. And all of these teams seem to have one. I'll use Swindon for an example. 
Michael Doughty, you know, he was brilliant on Tuesday and, and, and we couldn't handle him. We really couldn't. And we we miss a player like that in there, I believe. I think Charlie Carter's a really good player. And, you know, Chaz has come on. But for me, I, I wasn't overly impressed with Byron's performance. Um, I've I got to be completely honest. I was not impressed with Emmanuel Sanupe. I think since Sanupe's come back, he hasn't, for me, he hasn't done enough to warrant a start. I was disappointed that he was in front of Jason Cowley. Um, I like Jason Cowley and Guthrie's partnership. And I know that Cowley didn't have the best of games last Saturday, but I like that partnership and I would have liked to have seen that. I think that was a game for Cowley to play him. But, yeah, I think the midfield is a big issue for me. Um, and you can see that other areas of the pitch we're fine, but... The midfield is, is is a massive issue. Um, some stats, some stats to prove that as well. Um, we did the quiz last week, and on the assists part, our two big assists players in 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 the team are Luther Wilding and Chris Stokes, both with two each. That's unusual for a team. Normally. The assists come from the midfield players, you know, because the midfield players are the last line of call before that forward attack. And to have two defenders with the most assists kind of, to me, proves that the midfield at the minute isn't, I say isn't good enough. I know that we've got good players there, but hasn't been good enough, I should say, this season. To have no assists or not the highest amount of assists in the midfield, that's a massive concern for me. Um, another stat as well, goals. You know, in this division, we have to have goal scorers from the midfield. We haven't had that. You know, our goals have come from Guthrie, Cowley, Newton and, and a couple of the odd ones. Again, I looked at midfield players that are scoring goals. And for the listeners listening to this, please correct me on Twitter and Facebook if I am wrong, but... I believe that there's been only in the division in in this season, sorry, uh, two players from the midfield that have scored. I, I might be wrong. Uh, Dean Parrott in the League Cup at home against Southend, and Charlie Carter uh, against Grimsby. Other than that, I can't think of any players that have scored goals from the midfield. Elliot List has been used as a centre forward. I don't think there's been any goal scorers from the midfield, which is a, a disappointing thing for me. Um, and I think that was very evident on on Tuesday night, that, that the midfield massively lacked. And it is something that we need to, in my opinion, strengthen on. But obviously we're not at the January transfer window. Um, so, yeah, discussing Tuesday night, very heartbreaking, very disappointing. Um I thought the game cried out for Dean Parrott. And that was a big positive Tuesday, that Dean Parrott was able to get back on and have minutes. But even Dean went clean through in the second half, should have scored and hit it wide. Scott Cuthbert having a chance as well from a header that he probably should have buried. So we did have chances in the game. We went in a half-time Tuesday and I wasn't impressed. And I know that with bottom and a point would have been good and nil-nil at half-time away from home at a place like that is good. But I wasn't impressed. I want to see my Stevenage team and my football club and my borough play exciting football, get on the ball, control the game, be the influences in the game. And I didn't think we were the influence, uh, influencers on Tuesday night, sorry. I thought we were second best for the 90 minutes. Although Dean did change the game. Him and Curtis looked good together. Um, the winning goal was just so, so disappointing. Um, we went for the game. We tried winning the game, got caught. Uh, Callum Watts losing his man down the left. I'm sure people have seen the highlights. Tim's and Byram losing the man in you know in the middle, and and the geezer goes and scores. Um, very disappointed with that. You know the guy who scored is the top goal scorer in the division, Owen Doyle, and we should have known to have been on him in the last minutes of the match. And you know you watch the highlights back, and he's on his own, isn't he? With with five ten yards of space, nearly. I think that's one thing I was disappointed with. You know, I think Mark said it in his interview. The fundamentals, you know, stopping crosses, blocking challenges. You know, there was so many times we let a ball go in the box and we can't afford to do that as a team that's bottom at the minute in division. We have to 
block crosses and make it difficult for teams to score. And, and although it was a good finish from the lad, it should never have gone in. I, I, again, I've got to be honest, it was it was devastating for me. I, I was heartbroken coming home. I really was. I felt very low after that. And I was absolutely gutted because I really believed that the team were going to get at least a point. Um, I think what I was heartbroken as well was Mark's reaction. I saw Mark and Mark went crazy after the goal went in and I just felt so bad for him, you know, because he'd really turned a lot of good things and to lose like that is a real downer. Um, but I think it showed the players' spirit and mentality after the goal went in. We nearly then went then and gone and got a goal with Dean Parrott and you know, in the free kick nearly went in and the boys showed heart, but it wasn't enough. Disappointing to win and draw and then lose another. Um, 24th place, nine points. It's not great. Nine points from 45. No win away from home. Yeah, there's a lot of negatives there, but hopefully we can turn it around with this big month coming up. Um, again, I will go through the three-word analysis from Tuesday night. Now, there are quite a lot. <laughs> it seems to be the case. Whenever we lose, we get sent loads in. So um, I'm just going to go through the three-word analysis from Borough's 1-0 loss on Tuesday night. Uh, Billy said, I give up. I think we all felt like that, Billy, to be honest. Reese Harrison, National League 2020 slash 21. Oh, God, I hope not. Callum Jackson, bring Wesley back. Ian Coles, unsurprising, move on. Andy Glodansky, painful M4 roadworks. My God, Andy, they were, mate. Um, I drove back uh, with Amy in the car on, on Tuesday. My word, that 40 mile an hour limit for, for about 20 miles was painful, especially after that loss as well. Uh, Sleep Twit said, huge three games. Old Borough Bar Steward, we offer nothing. Barry must beat Morecambe. I agree with you, Barry. Simply Borough, action, not words. Cobby, enough is enough. Reese Donnelly, chips were great. Oh, oh, I, I kind of agree with Reese there. Me and Amy ordered chips before the game and they weren't ready for half an hour, apparently, but no, they were nice. Um, Nick said, last chance saloon. Nate, I'm fed up. Khalid, heartache, despondency, pain. Michael, next game huge. And Craig Keenan, everyone stay calm. So thank you to all the listeners for sending in the three-word analysis from... Uh, for uh, Saturday, uh, Tuesday's loss, sorry, away at Swindon. Um, but now a very disappointing evening. And again, it was the first time that I was really gutted, to be honest. But keep the positivity, we move forward and we all know that we come on to this Saturday, which we're going to talk a little bit about now, as probably the biggest game of the season. So, yeah, this Saturday, 16th League 2 fixture of the season at home against Morecambe. A massive game for us, I have to admit. It's probably arguably our biggest game of the whole season, of the whole fixture list so far, and the start of vital run of fixtures. You know, we've got Morecambe, we've got Scunthorpe away next Saturday, which are just above us. We've got the FA Cup, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, we've got Oldham, we've got Walsall, we've got a run of fixtures where Borough have to get wins and, and results. And I think it's really important to not lose these games you know because if we lose these games that gap's going to get bigger if we can win and pick up points and draws then we keep intact with that pack above us and that is vitally important for our survival i think what we have to do now as a team is we have to take the mentality of playing in a mini league you know we're 24th let's play from 19th downwards as a mini league you know let's set ourselves goals let's try and get off the bottom first let's try and get into the top two of this mini league and see if we can extend that through the division and climb the table and I think that's what we have to do Saturday uh, more can be in 23rd a point above us it's a huge game for our club and I'm really backing the team really supporting the player Saturday and you know let's get three points let's get up to 12 points the other big thing about having 12 points with that would be a quarter of the amount of points to keep our club in the division 12 points nearly and 12 points out of 50 give us a platform and a chance um I think for me as well teams that are bottom I've always felt especially when I played football in my career is whenever a team's struggling in a bottom the home form is so important you know, we have to pick points up at home. And the good thing about a win is if we look at the last three home 
result if we do get a, if we do get a win. Sorry, we're unbeaten in three home games at the Lamex. A draw against Cambridge, a win against Grimsby, and a win against Morecambe. And that would be a really big positive for the club and for the players and the team and us fans and Mark and Revs to have seven points out of nine in the last three home matches is something that we can build on from. Um, so I think that's hugely important Saturday. But I want to see a good performance. You know, we need to start proving that we're not the bottom play side in this division. And beating Morecambe proves that. Proves that we actually know we're not the worst side in this division. They are. And I think that would be a really big positive thing for, for the players, in my opinion. So I think it's make or break. I, I really do think that if the team get a win, I think Mark and Revs keep the job. I think if the team don't, I think Phil Wallace will look to appoint a manager. Unfortunately, I've you know as much as I love Mark and I bat Mark and I will bat Mark to the heavens and home. I think that if we don't win, Phil will look to incorporate someone else, which is a shame because I really do think Mark's the man for this club. I really do him and Revs. Um, so yeah, in that regard, I think it's make or break. In, in my opinion, I don't want anything other than a win. Yeah, I mean we take a point, ten points, but these are the games that we need to be winning to keep our beloved football club in, you know, beloved Steve and his football club in the in the division. So, yeah, it's a tough game. Morecambe, um, they're a bit of a weird side, aren't they? I, th- I think we can all see the stats and on Morecambe. I've got the league table in front of me. Um, very hot and cold. We've got one win. Morecambe have got two. Uh, Morecambe have won two games, drawn four, lost nine. So actually on paper, Morecambe have lost more games than we have. We've lost eight, they've lost nine. So, you know, they, they, it doesn't seem like they're that much better. Uh, they've scored 14 goals and let in 28. So we've scored less. We've scored 11, they've scored eight, uh, t- um, 14, sorry. But they've let in a lot. You know, Morecambe, it looks like they they leak goals. They've let in 28 and we've let in 21 um, I'm looking at the stat now for Morecambe. They're the team that's letting the most goals this season. So that's a positive for us at the Lamex. You know, let's be together. Let's squash Morecambe and, 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 and get, you know, those big players on the ball up top with Curtis Guthrie. Um, their form, uh, the last five games they've drawn, they've lost two. They then won and then lost on Tuesday night. So a bit hot and cold form. Um, manager being Jim Bentley, we all know Jim Bentley. You know he's an experienced League Two manager that keeps them up every year. So it's going to be a really tough game for us. Um, so I will come to the team selection now. I have chosen the team that I would play um, on Saturday. I think we need a lot of pace in the wide areas. I think that's very important for us. To, to, you know, coming into this game, I, I want to see players with pace playing on the flanks we need to start creating and especially in the midfield as I mentioned on Tuesday we have to start creating good football in that midfield and dictating and being the influencers in the game which I said earlier so my team uh, in goal uh, will play Bastian uh, because I do believe Paul Farman's out because he was suspended from a booking again the other night Paul I don't know what you're doing to us mate honestly Um, so I'd put Bastian in goal it would be quite good to see Sasha in uh, in goal, uh, dictating that back four. Uh, I've done a four instead of a five. I've gone Terence Van Kooten at right back. Great to see Terence back the last two games, and I actually think he's played really well. Uh, I've got Scott Cuthbert, Ben Nugent, and Chris Stokes making up my back four. I think that back four is good enough to get a result against anyone in the division. Uh, in front of that back four, I've gone for Charlie Carter and Dean Parrott. Um, for me, I would start Dean Parrott. I said on Tuesday, what really shocked me is the lack of quality and creativity we had in the middle of the pitch, the lack of youth. And I think that Dean Parrott, he has all those qualities. He's, he's creative. He really is a League One player. He scores goals. Again, a point that I alluded to again. Um, we're having no midfield players score any goals really at the minute. So I'd like to see him and Charlie in there, two young lads, and dictating the play and being creative and having freedom. Uh, I've actually gone for Emmanuel Sanupe on the right-hand side. Now, again, I haven't been impressed with Sanupe since he's come back, but I think we need to start using him as a wide player. I think we need to get Sanupe on the ball and running at people. 
Um, I think he's very dangerous when he's got the ball and he's taking people on. And I think what we've done with him a lot over the last year is use him centrally as almost like a... Uh, I say Sadio Mane, but but you, you know what I mean. Getting the ball in small areas and then, boom, he's off. Because, you know, that's how Sanupe likes to play. He likes to have the ball with a lot of people around him and he can trickle through and then he's, and then he's off. And he can go from gear one to gear six. You know, he's the kind of modern-day midfield player as it is now. Um, but I'd like to see him on the right-hand side. I'd like to see him getting the ball and taking people on and using his pace and being a threat up there. Uh, on the left-hand side, I've actually put Tyler Denton. Um, I like two balanced, fast lads on either side of the pitch. I like Tyler's defensive responsibilities, but I also like the way that Tyler goes forward. And I'd like to see him in that role, getting forward, taking people on, getting good balls into the box and creating things for the team. I think he'd excel in that role. Uh, and my two up top, I've gone Curtis Guthrie and Jason Cowley. Um, I'd like to see that partnership back. I was gutted that we didn't get to see it on Tuesday. I think that Guthrie and Cowley have formed a little partnership. Uh, one of the partnerships that Mark has formed, actually, in my opinion. And I think we've seen good things from them two players, especially uh, the Leeson.com and Grimsby at home and the many matches before. I've seen some really good things from them two, and I'd like to see them back together. So, in my opinion, I think that team's good enough to get three points on Saturday. Um, so, yeah, no, really good to go through that. Again, I would normally ask the... Uh, the boys as teams, but obviously they're not here. So, um, but no, really good to go through that. Um, again, you know, the next four fixtures are absolutely vital. Um, make or break game for for us on Saturday, in my opinion. Scunthorpe, Old and Walsall, they're just huge games and games that we can't afford to lose because we have to stay in that pack if we're going to get our club off the bottom and into a position that we can be proud of and climb the division. Um, but also good for the players' confidence and are motivated to go forward. Now, I do say the next four games, but there is something that we were going to have a big discussion about with others and the guests on the podcast, but because it's only me, I'm going to just discuss through it. Um, the FA Cup. Now, probably one of my favourite competitions. I actually had the luxury of playing this competition for Ware FC, actually, up at Woodson Park many years ago when I was a 19-year-old, 20-year-old. Um, I remember playing this competition, losing against London Colney. Uh, it's great to talk about it on the podcast because I've actually played in the competition. Um, but, yep, the FA Cup draw first round took place on Monday at the game before Swindon. Um, now, the FA Cup, as we know, is a competition for smaller clubs of our size is is a huge competition for football clubs of our size it's massive and and we all know the great nights and the great days we've had in the FA Cup in the past the Newcastle nights you know the the many years ago when we drew with Newcastle at home and then we had the infamous incident where the ball didn't actually cross the line away at St James's Park and you know the Swindon win the Birmingham result into the newer years of beating Newcastle at home and getting our own back 3-1. What a great night that was. I always remember seeing Peter Wing go through and chipping the goalkeeper. What a night that was. The FA Cup ties against Tottenham Hotspur. The home tie. Who can forget that? The 0-0. Gareth Bale playing at the Lamex. Nicking a 0-0 and getting a, a replay at White Hart Lane. And again, who can forget the White Hart Lane tie? Um, Joel Byram putting us 1-0 up. And I'll always remember that moment as a Stevenage Football Club fan. I remember that moment for the rest of my life. I'll always remember getting the penalty and seeing Joel whisk it away in the bottom left corner. What a, what a night that was. And then Jermaine Defoe scoring him, had a Adebayor and I say Bale cheating himself to a penalty. But but yeah, it was a, uh, you know, we've enjoyed some great cup nights. Um, and the draw was made. Um, we were two balls out from... Get in the bye, which, when I look back on, considering how many balls and how many teams were involved, it's quite an achievement getting that far in the draw, I've got to be honest. But it did come out, uh, ball 42, at home, against Peterborough. Uh, the team that are top of League One after last night. Probably the toughest tie we could have got in the, in the draw. And with... Yeah, we've got Peterborough at home at the Lamex, 9th of November. What a cup tie. I'm so excited for it. I think it's a great tie for our club at home. We all know in the FA Cup, 
that at home any tie is winnable and you know you can read too much into Peterborough and the stats and yeah they've got the most I think they've got the most dangerous attacking uh, players in the whole of England I do believe they scored the most goals I think someone said I think that might have been Reese on Twitter but what a tie I'm so excited for that I love seeing Borough in the FA Cup and you know it's infectious in us all Stevenage supporters at the football club and to see my club and our club involved in the competition in such a brilliant tie like that it's going to be excellent um, we all know Peterborough are going to sell out the uh, the away and they always do when they come to us but being at the top of the table I think for us it's a it's a massive tie for many reasons it's in and around the time when we're playing a lot of the teams down the bottom in League 2 and I think it could be a cup tie that changes our whole season to be quite honest um, I really do believe it believe it can you know if we win imagine the confidence that's going to have for the players and then going into the home game against Oldham and the away game at Walsall it could really transcend and transform our whole season so I think that's important for the fact that we've got them and you know yeah you know if we win or get a result we've just got a result against a team that's probably arguably you know the best team in the cup draw at the minute so massive tie I'm buzzing for it I can't wait for it the FA Cup at Borough is brilliant and to have a home tie so that everyone can go to I love the competition I love when when uh, my football club are in the competition as we know um but yeah it's going to be difficult um it would be great to get through and get to the second round and I think we can use the FA Cup this season as a how do I put it, as a, a motivator for our season. You know, I always remember the first season in League Two under Graham Wesley where we were having a tough start and almost the FA Cup changed our season. We had those matches and it helped our league form and I think the FA Cup this season could be the same. So in that regard, I think it's really important as well that we use the FA Cup as a you know, as a not friendlies because of competitive matches, but extra matches to help the league form. And I think anything to help the league form at the minute is important. So I think for that reason, it's, it's huge. Um, money for the club, home tie, and it's an extra bit of promotion for the new stand, isn't it? Um, which is really important. And another important thing about having a good cup run this season is the new stand. We want to promote that stand. We want to get people talking about Borough again. So, yeah, it was really good to see it. And... Um, there are quite a few discussions on the draw being a stitch-up about uh, Karen Kearney dropping the ball on purpose. <laughs> I mean, I'm not so sure. But, but yeah, Chichester getting the uh, bye in the end, it would have been lovely to get the bye. But um, I think it's important. Any match that we can have at the minute is, is an important match. But, um, no, really good to discuss that. Uh, it'll be a cracking tie. And, you know, let's all support Borough. Let's get behind the team. Let's be together and support our club and see our club into the second round. Even a replay. Um, I think that's the great thing about the tie. A replay and everyone can go to it. It's only up the A1. Um, uh, and it would be great to get a replay and go there and see Borough play away in the, in the Lions then, if you like, of, of, of League One. But... But yeah, it's, I think overall there was a lot of negatives about it, but I don't really see a lot of negatives. I think it's a win-win for us. If we don't go through, we can just concentrate on the division. So, um, But yeah, very looking forward to that. 9th of November, please get down to it. Anyone that's listening, uh, come and support the team. It'll be great to see the team into the second round or you know just get a good performance and a good result. Um, so we'll move on now. We'll come on to the League 2 Roundup section. Now, this is the part of the podcast where every week we go through everything League 2. Um, now, we weren't the only... Again, I say this every week. I know it kind of latches on, but we weren't the only um, game on Saturday. Now, we have got Saturday and Tuesday's results to go through. Um, now, I will go through... Oh, I'll say Saturday's first because, uh, you know, Saturday was obviously the first round of fixtures. Obviously, Borough drawing 1-1 away at Port Vale. The results were Bradford 2, Crawley 1, Cambridge 4, Exeter 0, Colchester 0, Morecambe 1, Crewe 3, Swindon 1, Forest Green 2, Mansfield 2, Grimsby 0, Leighton Orient 4, Newport 2, Scunthorpe 1, Northampton 2, Salford 0, Oldham 0, Macclesfield 1, Plymouth 2, Carlisle 0, and Walsall 1, Cheltenham 2. So some, well, I say surprising results, but 
Cambridge beating Exeter 4-0. That's one that's got to stand out, isn't it? My word. I know what's happened to Exeter recently, but really have dropped in form. Um, another one? Late or it winning 4-0 away at Grimsby? Um, Grimsby going for an absolute torrid time. I mean, obviously us getting our first win of the season against Grimsby, but then losing 4-0 at home against Leighton Orient's an appalling result. Um, other results, Macclesfield beating Oldham, Oldham lost again. Plymouth beat Carlisle 2-0, they've improved in form. And Cheltenham winning again, um, 2-1 away at Walsall. Some really, interest, really interesting sorry, some results there. Um Obviously, the league table after Saturday obviously consisted of us being 24th with nine points um, and Morecambe just being uh, above us. I've got to be honest, the the loss against Forest Green, I think we all kind of you know considered that, to be honest. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, a bit of a weird one there. Um, now, I will come on to the results from Tuesday night because, uh, again, there was a second round of... Second round of matches, sorry. Um, oh, sorry, actually, I mentioned Morecambe losing at Forest Green. No, that was Tuesday night, sorry. Um, Morecambe actually um, getting a result at Colchester, which was, was quite surprising. Um, so, yeah, we'll come on to Tuesday night's results. Now, obviously, Borough losing 1-0 away at Swindon. Uh, the results were Bradford 1, Port Vale 2, Cambridge 0, Grimsby 0, Carlisle 0, Northampton 2, Cheltenham 3, Macclesfield 0, Crew nil, Colchester nil, Mansfield one, Salford two, Morecambe nil, Forest Green two, Newport one, Crawley one, Oldham two, Walsall nil, Plymouth four, Leighton Orient nil, Scunthorpe three, Exeter one. Now again, some really interesting results. Scunthorpe beating Exeter three one. Exeter again have had an absolute appalling week there. They've shipped seven goals. Only scoring one and have lost to arguably one of the worst teams in the division. So, I don't know what's happening to Exeter recently. Um, another standout result. This is a bit of a strange one. Plymouth 4-0 against Leighton Orient. Um, Leighton Orient just winning 4-0 and then losing 4-0. I think that's the thing with League 2. Anyone can beat anyone. And if you turn up on the day, regardless of form... It can be anything about the league. I think that's why we love seeing Borough in League 2 so much, is anyone could beat anyone. But those results are very shocking. Um, Salford beating Mansfield 2-1. Um, Port Vale winning at Bradford 2-1. That's a great result. Oldham beating Walsall 2-0. There's a lot of very surprising results in there. But um, but yeah, some some shockers. Plymouth winning 4-0. Plymouth have really improved again. They've started the season excellently. And then Ryan Lowe has seemed to turn the ship there so it's um very very surprising um now i will come on to the league table now i know i've said this for the last few weeks but i will start at the bottom as we <laughs> so just to get it out of the way to be honest um currently 24th place with nine points is borough for the borough unlucky to see us there but very disappointed we will get out of it uh, 23rd place with 10 points is morecambe 22nd place with 13 points, four points ahead of us, is Scunthorpe. 21st place with 14 points is Carlisle United. 20th place with 14 points also is Oldham Athletic. And 19th with 15 points is Walsall. So as you can see, we're not too far from that pack. Playing all those teams, if we can get a couple of wins, then you know we're involved in that kind of mini league, as I mentioned earlier. Um, up the top end of the division, very competitive. Currently top of League 2 with 30 points is Crew Alexandra. Second with 28 points is Cheltenham Town. Third place with 28 points is Forest Green Rovers. Fourth place with 27 points is Bradford City. Fifth place with Newport... Uh, sorry, 27 points is Newport County. Sixth place with 26 points is Exeter City. Seventh place with 24 points is Swindon Town. And eighth place with 23 points is Plymouth Argyle. So, very competitive up the top. Uh, Crew Alexandra being top. I think we picked out Crew for a contender. Um, Cheltenham Forest Green, Bradford, very competitive up there. Very shy. It's a shame to see Borough so far off. Nearly 20 points off the playoffs. Um, yeah, so far off. Um, now, the goal scorers in the league will quickly fly through the goal scorers. Curtis Guthrie not being that far off now with five goals, or four goals in the division. Uh, I do believe that I have the top five. Fifth place in the goal scoring sheet with six goals. One assist is Nicky Maynard. Fourth, six goals, four assists is Ryan Broom of Cheltenham. Sorry, Nicky Maynard being of Man Mansfield. 
Third place, seven goals and one assist is Chris Porter of Crew. Second place, seven goals and one assist is Danny Rose of Mansfield. And I hate to say the geezer that's top of the list. Top goal scorer in League Two, ten goals, no assists is Owen Doyle of Swindon. So that one kind of burns a little bit talking about that, I've got to be honest. Um, but yeah, no, really good to go through the table and top goal scorers. Again, hopefully we can see um, Curtis Guthrie come into that very soon. It would be nice. Tell you what, there'll be, there'll be hopefully um, we'll get a sweepstake going for Curtis if he can get into the top five, but we'll have to see. Uh, now, there are, um, obviously, our League Two fixtures this Saturday. I'll quickly come through the fixtures. Obviously, Borough's make or break match against Morecambe at home, as we all know that fixture. Fixtures for Saturday are... Exeter v Plymouth. What a game that is. Whew, the Devon Derby. And that's a one o'clock kickoff as well. So could be on telly that one. Uh, Colchester v Newport. Crawley v Swindon. Forest Green v Crewe. That's another cracking game. Grimsby Cheltenham. Leighton Orient v Carlisle. Macclesfield v Bradford. Northampton v Cambridge. Port Vale v Oldham. Salford v Scunthorpe. And Walsall v Mansfield. So once again, some cracking matches. Our game is arguably a, a massive game because... We're both bottom of the division and playing Morecambe only a place above us, us being bottom. Exeter v Plymouth, what a game that is because Exeter on a bit of poor form and Plymouth come into that with cracking form but are away. Uh, Forest Green crew, what a game that is. You know, Forest Green being third, crew being first. Some really good games going on over the weekend. Um, and we're involved in that kind of list really. So, um, no, really good to go through the fixtures. Now, it is that time of the week, once again. And we do apologise for last week because we did miss it out on the podcast because we had so many features going on last week from the quiz to all the other things that we had. And it is the Stevenage Football Club podcast, League Two Fixtures Prediction Competition. Now, it's been a busy week. There's been two rounds of fixtures and predictions. Um... There has been some changes in the league table. We have had uh, two newbies join the competition. And unfortunately, there has been three people that have left the competition. Because these three people that I am going to name in a little bit, and we are going to name and shame them, um, weren't sending in their predictions. And it was just unfair every week for the players, you know, considering there's prizes to have these three in. Um, the three players that have left the competition were Borough Bits, Jack Slater and Charlie Vaughan. So, guys, thank you for being involved. We'll give them a big round of applause um, for being involved in the competition. But their journey with the League Two Fixtures Prediction Competition has come to an end. Now, the two players, we're going to give a massive welcome to Nathan Smith and Michael Stoysavlovich. So, big round of applause for the boys for joining. Uh, Michael, Sto- uh, Michael Stoysavlovich being a... Um, well, he's been on the podcast twice. was on last week. was on a few weeks ago. Um, so, it's great to have them boys in the uh, competition. Um, now, I will come through the league table because it's very competitive, the League 2 fixtures prediction competition. Now, this league table is after two rounds of weeks. So, it's after Saturday and after Tuesday. Um, big round of applause for each player. Currently in 15th place with 23 points is Nathan Smith. Well done, Nathan. Currently 14th place with 29 points is Michael Stoysavlovich. Well done, Michael. In 13th place with 55 points, big round applause, is Colleen. Well done, Colleen. 12th place with 64 points is Jed. Well done, Jed. In 11th place, he's not going to be happy with this, 101 points, Reese Donnelly. Oh, Reese. That is poor, mate, out of 15. Uh, 10th place, climbing the league table quite considerably, 120 points, is Nate. Well done, Nate. Nate will be happy with that. 9th place, 148 points, is Danny Lusby. And Danny, just before I read them out, Danny was actually one of the guests supposed to be on tonight. So, just for your ears only. Um, 8th place, 164 points, climbing the division, is Ollie Long. Well done, Ollie. Seventh place, 164 points. Also, is Mark Slater. Well done, Mark. Sixth place with 168 points, Aiden Cheevers. Well done, Aiden. Really good. Uh, it's where it gets interesting. Fifth place, 175 points, is James Walker. Well done, James. Fourth place, 188 points, is Hartley Borough. Well done, Hartley. So, top three. This is where it gets very interesting. Third place, 
195 points is Matt Farley. <laughs> Go on, Matt. I like that. I'll, to be fair, I'll um, I'll take third place out of 15. Um, second place, 202 points. Seven points in front of me is Patrick Jackson. Well known, Patrick. And currently top of the helm, 224 points. Not that far ahead of myself, I must admit. Is Harley Clark. So well done, Harley, up there. Um, so it had been a, a very high scoring weekend to be quite honest to say. Um, but no, going really well the competition. Now, I've gone through the fixtures. Anyone that wants to get involved with the competition, please tweet or Facebook us or get in contact with myself. Um, three points for a correct prediction, two points for half a prediction correct, so getting one team goal scoring line right. No points for wrong prediction. And every time there's a correct score line, whether that's half or a correct prediction, on Barra's score, there's an extra bonus point. So it's a great competition. It's three months into it. Uh, if you finish bottom, you get a wooden spoon and the top four get prizes and hopefully we can get a playoffs system going at the end of the season. So, um, no, really, really good to go through that. And uh, also, yeah, really good to cover the uh, League 2 Roundup, which has been fantastic. Um, now, obviously, really quickly before I move on, I've got to quickly run through my League 2 predictions, which I've accidentally forgotten. Um, <laughs> so we'll quickly do that now, just to conclude um, the League 2 roundup section. Uh, I've gone for, in my predictions, I've gone for a 2-0 Borough win against Morecambe. Um, I have a feeling that the boys will put in a really comfortable performance. And we haven't seen a comfortable win all season for quite a while. So, yeah, I'm going 2-0 Borough. Uh, I'm going... Exeter 1, Plymouth 2. I'm going Colchester 1, Newport 1. Crawley 2, Swindon 2. Forest Green 0, Crew 1. Grimsby 0, Cheltenham 2. Leighton Orient 1, Carlisle 0. Macclesfield 1, Bradford 3. Northampton 2, Cambridge 2. Port Vale 1, Oldham 1, Salford 2, Scunthorpe 1, and Walsall 1, Mansfield 2. So they're my predictions. So once again, please get involved in the competition. It'll be fantastic to get so many people involved and, um, and yeah, really have a really good competition for the last six to five months of the uh, season, which is fantastic. Um, but no, really good to include the Lee 2 round. I'm ever sorry for the listeners that I forgot my predictions. It's quite tough doing the podcast on your own. I've got to be honest, it's... Uh, little bit of a challenge but hopefully i'm doing well hopefully it's not a complete car crash um now we'll move on to one of the last features of the podcast which is the q and a section now this is a chance for any fans to send in questions or non-fans to send in questions for the panel and we'll answer the questions now there are four questions so now i'm going to answer all these questions i'm going to try and get through them as quick as possible because i have been going nearly an hour i'm a bit of a chatterbox to be fair but um so question number one and this is from Jed. And Jed has asked, if you could take one attribute from a borough player and apply it to another, what would it be? Jed, that is a fantastic question. Jed pulled up a brilliant question last week. Um, oh, what a question that is. Um, if I could take one attribute from a borough player and apply it to another, what would it be? I would probably take... I would take the pace of Emmanuel Sanupe and give it to Scott Cuthbert. Because I think if Scott Cuthbert had Emmanuel Sanupe's pace, he would be unbeatable. Um, and I love Scott Cuthbert. I think he's such a good player. Um, so, yeah, I would give Emmanuel Sanupe's pace and give it to Scott Cuthbert. No one would beat him, would they, with Sanupe's pace and Scotty's defending. So... I'd love to have that attribute with Scott Cuthbert. I think he'd suit that brilliantly. So, um, yeah, that would be my answer. But really good question, Jed. Uh, question number two comes from Patrick Jackson. What are the keys to turning our season around and turning near misses into wins? Um, really good question, Patrick. Uh, I think the keys are hard work. Um, hard work and dedication. You know, they're two things that if you work so hard at something, you'll eventually achieve. Um and I think that's really it. Um, 
working as hard as the players can on the training pitch, putting 110% effort. If we're not good enough to stay up, we won't. But I'd rather see our team give absolutely everything for our football club and our badge and come off that pitch with blood, sweat and tears rather than just jogging around for 90 minutes and not putting the effort in. So I think hard work is the key to turn it around. Uh, Good tactics, but I think Mark's implementing good tactics in games. Um, So I think the players have just got to keep working hard, keeping our head down, keep working. And I'm certain that the form and the results will turn around this season. Um, Aidan, sorry, but Patrick, really good question there, Patrick. Uh, Aidan has asked... Whilst I can understand why we set up defensively away from home, we have a history of conceding late goals. Do you think that we have the player's mindset, etc., to execute these tactics? Now, again, that's a really good question, Aidan. My answer to that is, yeah, you know, we, we have conceded a lot of late goals and Tuesday, again, was just a stinker, wasn't it? It was heartbreaking to see that go in and see our team lose in that way. Um, but... Setting up defensively, I I don't necessarily agree with that. I think if you... Teams that are bottom have to be difficult to beat, right? And we tried all season, all these wacky tactics, 4-3-3, 4-4-2. None of them worked. You know, under Dino, we didn't score a goal for how many games? Five league games, I think it was. And teams that are bottom have to be hard to beat. It's not setting up negative. It's making ourselves hard to beat. And I think this question alludes to the game on Tuesday. I thought Mark's tactics were spot on. We know going to Swindon, and I'll use the last two games there as an example. Whenever we've gone there and we've played 4-4-2, we've been 3-0 down within 15, 20 minutes. I think it was. Let's lose last season, for example. 3-2. We nearly need to point in that game. We were 3-0 down in 20 minutes. We were balling. It's a massively wide pitch, and you have to go there and play a tight team. And I was really impressed with that from Mark on Tuesday, actually. He played the five with the two wing-backs. And look, they didn't score till the 90th minute. All right, it come at an hour time of the game. But as we usually do go to Swindon, we actually did better than we normally did because he played a tighter setup and he played a tighter bat line and, and, and the right tactics, in my opinion. Um, to answer that question properly, I do think the players have the mindset to execute the tactics. I think we've seen that. I think we saw that Tuesday. We saw it Saturday. We saw it in the two wins we've had this season uh, last month. So, no, I think that the players do have the mindset to execute the tactics. They're all professionals. They've all been involved in the game for a long time, some most than others. But I I agree that these players can get results and can execute the tactics. And I don't think we're setting up defensively every game away from home. But sometimes we've got to do that. We've got to set up tough to beat. That's how bottom teams get results. Nick draws and then turn those draws into wins. And that's how teams improve their form. Um, But really good question, Adam. Uh, last question comes from Old Borough Bar Steward, and Old Borough Bar Steward has asked, was Farman getting booked for descent tactical or pure stupidity, bearing in mind our next opponent, but also it being a must-win game? Um, good question from, from Old Borough Bar Steward. Um, I mean, I don't know what was going through Paul's head on Tuesday. He's been booked a lot. I don't think I've ever known a goalkeeper wearing a Borough shirt to be booked as much as Paul. Um but, I mean, it could have been tactical. You know, he could be thinking, oh, if I get booked, Morecambe, you know, should be one of the easiest games on paper. But I think as a player, you, you don't want to do that. You know, you want to play in every game in the season. They're professionals. They love the game. That's why they're playing it to a professional level. So, no, I don't think it was tactical. I think Paul just probably got really wound up with the fact that we'd let him a last-minute go and, and lost his head probably and got booked. I don't think it was tactical whatsoever. It's disappointing, but let's look at the positives. We ain't got to worry about him being suspended for another five bookings, but knowing Paul's booking rate at the minute, he'll have another five in a month. So, um, But, no, I don't think it was tactical at all. I just think that Paul was upset with, with how the goals went in at the end. But, um but no, really good question there from Old Borough Bar Steward. Um, but no, that's about it for the questions. That's four questions sent in. But thank you ever so much for the four um, guys for sending them in. Um, it's really good to discuss some of those and, and go through some of those questions. Um, now, we've nearly been going an hour. I've got to be honest. I think I've done quite a 
reasonably good job considering I've had none of the boys here, but I can talk for England about Borough, so... <laughs> um, now, we're just going to quickly discuss a few things on the podcast now. Uh, obviously, um, one thing that we haven't discussed throughout, and we're going to have a little mention here, is uh, something that the club released last week, which was, in my opinion, huge for the club, um, was the Burger King Challenge. Now, this is, I think to our supporters, seems as a initiative to boost the football club's popularity. But what a fantastic bit of marketing and advertising from our club and Alex Tunbridge and the people at the marketing. Um, the idea is is to wear a Borough shirt, um, whether that's, well, on FIFA or, or a Borough shirt in real life and score a goal, tweet the Burger King Challenge and get involved with the Burger King Challenge and, and then you get yourself a free Whopper meal or, or there's different food or different items for different type of goals. What a fantastic initiative that is. Not only have we struggled with trying to improve the fan base at Stevenage for many years, which has been a burden, in my opinion, for the football club, and I hope the club can improve that. This initiative really supports that. and um, I've heard stories that there's been Borough home kits and away kits shipped out to Japan and USA and France and and Denmark, I mean, that is just absolutely fantastic. And it makes me proud to be a Stevenage fan, knowing that there are people abroad in different continents who have a connection with the football club, our beloved football club. I think it's great from the club. And, and again, I, I really echo the hard work that the boys are doing at Borough to try and really pump up and improve our fan base at the football club. Because we all know if we can improve the fan base, we get more funding, we get more money, and ultimately the club can grow and grow and grow and climb the divisions in England. So I think it's a great initiative. Um, I myself will be doing it. Next week at the Stevenage Football Club podcast, we will be giving it a go, but in person. So... That's going to be really interesting next uh, next Wednesday when we do it. Hopefully, it's not just me on my own, <laughs> other than tonight. Um, but, yeah, we're going to give that a go. We're going to get involved. We're going to put our uh, home and away kits on. I've got my away kit. I'm going to wear it with pride for Stevenage, and we're going to get involved in that because um, it's a great initiative. And Look, we're not doing it for the Whoppers. I'm pretty sure Joe is, though, in Joe. Joe being a gym freak, he needs all the protein he can get, but... Um, but no, we're just going to do that and get in, get into kind of support with the football club. That that would be fantastic. Um, but but yeah, no, we'll see how it goes, and hopefully we can see more people get connected with Borough, and and hopefully we can get a few of these guys who now have a connection with the football club abroad uh, come over and watch a game. But it was pretty cool seeing the famous YouTubers talk about it and YouTube and getting millions of views. But uh, but yeah, great initiative from the football club, and I really hope it takes off. I've got to be honest. Um, now we've come to the end of the podcast I didn't actually think that we'd go on for an hour just me waffling on but uh, we, see, we seem to have done um, now just really quickly before I go uh, the Stevenage Football Club podcast charity football match uh, the kits are being ordered there's going to be a bit of news about that next week on raffle prizes and um, different fundraising techniques that we're going to talk about so we'll talk about that on the podcast next week uh, hopefully with guests um, now just before I leave us, guys, um, really tough, well, I say tough, but important match on Saturday. It's the start to vital fixtures of our survival and, for me, probably our most important time of the season. If we get re- results and improve, I think that we will stay up this season. If we don't, there's an argument there to say we're going to be stuck in the bottom three for the whole season. Um, I want to see a good performance. I want to see the players get a win. I want to see us improve our home form and get points at home, which is important for teams that are struggling. I want to see a win for Mark and Revs. We all know that if Mark and Revs get a win, they stay in the job for longer. And I really do think Mark's the man for the team and the job. Look at the improvements that he's made just in the space of just over a month. Um, I think a worrying thing for me is we've played 15 games and we've got nine points, nine points for 45. If we look at our points prediction total at the minute we're predicted 27 points from 46 games, which is worrying. Um, We probably need 20 more points to to stay up, in my opinion. Um, So I've worked out, and I've got it in front of me now, that we need two wins per month for the next however many months to stay up, the next six months, I do believe, or six or seven months. If we get two wins per month, we stay up. I think 
as much as people hate talking about the 50 point mark and I've heard it a lot it really applies to us this season next year is our 10th year in the football league it'll be our 8th season in league 2 and I'd love to see our football club involved in that and a part of that thinking about the national league is very worrying and um as much as it wouldn't change anything in terms of our support, it would be a disaster and a nightmare to see our club back down in that division. So for me, these next four or five fixtures are vital, are vital. December looks like an incredibly tough month. You know, Crawley, Crew, Newport, Plymouth, Forest Green. Whoa, I mean, we run of really tough results, tough, uh, tough fixtures, sorry. So in my opinion, we have to win. We have to win Saturday. And, you know, let's everyone get together at the Lamics. Let's all support the team and really get together and support Mark and get into the football club and make a day of it and, and get and hopefully the players can get us a win. Um, now, I ask normally the guests, you know, one or three words, win, draw, lose. I'm going with win. I'm going to back the boys and back my club and, you know, hopefully we can see a result. Um, but... Yeah, have a lovely weekend to everyone though. Hopefully we see quite a few faces down at the Lamex and, and we get a good crowd and you know our most important fixture of the season, biggest fixture of the season. Hopefully it'll be a fixture that we look back on and go, oh my God, we needed to win that day, didn't we? And we got that. Um, massive support for Mark and Revs. Massive su support for the players, sorry. Let's make a day of it. Let's get the Lamex rocking and let's be together and let's create a, an evolution for the future. Um, so well, to all the listeners, thank you ever so much for getting involved with the podcast tonight. Again, I'm ever so sorry you've had to listen to me waffle on for an hour. But unfortunately, the boys have been stuck in traffic coming home from work and there's nothing we can do with it being a Thursday. Um, but thank you ever so much for the people that threw in the uh, three-word analysis and the four questions, the four brilliant questions. I probably have to admit they're probably the best questions we've had. Yeah, um, but thank you to everyone. Thank you to all the listeners for listening to this podcast. We will be back next week with episode number 19 of the build-up to um, our 17th League 2 fixture away at Scunthorpe, another massive match. We'll have the build-up from Saturday and the leasing.com uh, match, which will be on Tuesday. And didn't really talk too much about it tonight in the podcast, but because um, we had so much to discuss, but yeah, uh, a win on Tuesday could see us go through in that format of the competition for the first time against Fulham. So, yeah, that'll be nice to see us go through in a competition and get a bit of money for the club, which could go towards a player or something or a project at the club. Um, but, yeah, we'll be back next week. Hopefully we'll have a brilliant podcast. We'll have a fans voice backs next week and we'll have the Matt and Reese debate, which should be really, really good. Um, but thank you to all the listeners for getting involved and listening to this podcast. We'll be back next week. Again, thank you and ever so much. Um, sorry for listening to me waffle on for an hour. Uh, I can imagine my voice can get boring at times. But thank you for sticking with it if you have stuck with it for over an hour. Um, have a lovely weekend. Enjoy the weekend off work. Enjoy seeing Barrow. Hopefully get a win. And we'll be back next week. Uh, you have been listening to the Stevenage Football Club podcast. <laughs>